Hey guys, we are today going to talk about management of atrophic edentulous mandibular fractures. So in this case, we have to remember three to four basic points before looking at the management of such fractures. So first of all, the mandible is edentulous. That means no teeth are present over the mandible. Secondly, atrophic. What does the word atrophic means? The mandible it has thin bone and the blood supply or the vascular supply is very poor. This mostly happens in old age case cases. And the third point is when there is a downward and a backward displacement. That is downward and backward displacement of such edentulous mandible fracture fragments. We know we call it as bucket handle appearance. Okay, so these are the basic. Uh, oh, this is a basic overview about how we'll manage our edentulous fractures. So we again have two options. One is the closed reduction. The other is the open reduction. So we'll look into the detail of closed and open reduction. So the first point, when will we do our closed reduction? So while doing the closed reduction, these are the techniques that we can uh, apply on our patients. And while doing open reduction, we can use such uh, appliances, devices or uh, such uh, meshes or mini plates to fix our uh, fix and reduce our fragment fracture fragments so here in closed reduction we can use our patients pre-existing mandibular denture as i said such cases are mostly seen in old age patients so if old age patients have their dentures already we can use that their pre-existing mandibular denture and we can do a circummandibular wiring so we wire the denture with the uh, ridge or with the mandible and we uh, help to immobilize the fracture fragments. So this is one of the uh, ways to have a closed reduction. We are not opening the uh, fracture site. We are not exposing the site. We are not incising. So this is that's why we called it as a closed reduction. Secondly, we can use a gunning splint. So gunning splint is something similar to our dentures, but it does not have teeth. It is a, an acrylic uh, modification or an acrylic fabrication of the maxillary and the mandibular dentures. And in the uh, anterior region, we have an oral opening. So why do we have our oral opening? Because if we do our circummandibular wiring with our uh, pre-existing dentures, the patient wouldn't be able to open mouth or put food inside the mouth. So later on, gunning splints were discovered. So in gunning splint, it is an acrylic block of the maxilla and the mandible. It acts as a single unit and will have our anterior opening. Anterior re uh, region would be hollow. So we can have our soft diet for the patient. Third, we have external pin fixation appliances. Here also we are not opening or we are not incising the fracture site. We are just fixing the pins. It is like putting a stapler pin on our papers. Okay, so it, uh, we have our external pin fixation appliances. So there are devices which help us to place the pins in a proper way, in a proper direction at a proper position to stabilize the mandible. And lastly, if the fracture fragment is not extremely uh, displaced or as we don't have any teeth, there is no need of, there is no question of occlusion here. In some cases with minimum displacement or not an extensive fracture, we can have also have no treatment and a soft diet. As such, the vascular supply is, you know, uh, compromised and the bone is very thin. So in, in certain cases, it is better to go with our closed treatment. Whereas in the other cases where we have to have our open reduction, so there we have we can do it with these techniques. So in open reduction and internal fixation, we have basically five things. We can do it with our mini plates. We can do it with our titanium mesh with a bone graft. We can do it with our menin plates. Also, we have these three options of autogenous primary rib grafts then compression, osteosynthesis and reconstruction plates. So these are the ways with uh, which we can have our open reduction and internal fixation. So we'll look about all of it in a detail. So what, uh, what do you do with mini plates? So when you have to expose the fracture site and we have to fix it, we use our mini plates. So mini plates are something like these. They are like a three hole seg segment. It is known as a titanium mini plate. It is two mm in thickness and we screw we fix this we, we cannot just stick the mini plate on the bone so we have to fix it with a 6 mm monocortical titanium screws so the mini plates which are a, a three hold small segment something like this it is 2 mm in thickness and we fix it on the fracture site uh, with a 6 mm monocortical titanium screw the second option we have is we can fix it 
with our titanium mesh plus a bone graft so mesh is uh, you can imagine as a piece of gauze piece so if mesh is something like a gauze piece we have a titanium mesh and we also have our bone graft bone material bone powder so uh, we take a titanium mesh we cut it to the size that we want to uh, attach so after cutting it to a proper size uh, to place it on the fracture fragment or the fracture site we adapt that uh, titanium mesh and we fix it so we how do we fix it again in this case we fix it with monocortical screws and here the titanium mesh overlaps the fracture fragments by 20 mm on each side it it does not have to be very exact we have to make the titanium mesh a little bit bigger than the actual fracture fragment side so it will overlap a each side by 20 mm so that is about our titanium mesh with the bone graft. We also put a, a certain amount of bone graft over it to secure the titanium mesh. And lastly, we have our menin plates. So what is menin plate? It is something, you know, if, if this is my bone, if I hold my hand over this, so this will be my menin plate. It is something like this. I'll just draw it for you guys. You can also Google it. There are beautiful pictures available on Google for this menin plates. So this is something which holds the bone from above. So you open the fracture site, you reduce the fragments and you put something like a clip over the bone. So it is a supra periosteal. What does that mean? Supra periosteal. If this is my bone, I'll put it over the periosteum. So it, will, it is a supra periosteal. It is a paraskeletal. What do you mean by paraskeletal? Para means around and skeleton means bone. So we'll put it around the bone and it is a bone clamping device. It is something like a clamp. It is a bone clamping device. So menin plates are a bone clamping device. Th this can also be used for our open reduction and internal fixation. The last three points are autogenous primary rib graft. So we also take a graft from the rib section and we use it as a splint to reduce and fix our uh, fracture sites in edentulous mandible. Then we have compression osteosynthesis. So we also discussed this in our earlier lectures about compression osteosynthesis here we fix it with vitalium my uh, mini compression system so there is this white uh, vitalium mini compression system and again we have to fix it with a self tapping bicortical here everywhere we were using monocortical screws in uh, compression osteosynthesis we will use bicortical anchored screws okay so that is all about our compression osteosynthesis and lastly we can also use reconstruction plates so these are uh, all these are variable this is just a, uh, what i got from the standardized textbooks but this can be variable according to our variation in the fracture extension if it is a very big fracture fragment or it is a very small fracture fragment uh, the sizes will differ but these are the standard sizes that we use so in compression reconstruction uh, sorry in reconstruction plates we will have our 2.4 mm titanium reconstruction plate which is fixed in a place with a three bicortical titanium screws so in this three in the lower three which i have returned two of them we have bicortical screws here in the above three we have monocortical screws so we fix our titanium reconstruction plates with the three bicortical titanium screws per segment so that is all about our management of atrophic edentulous mandibular fractures thank you guys so if you like this video uh, you can uh, hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel for any doubts or any more topics to be discussed you can drop it in the comment section below thanks for watching